Hello everyone. So we're back on the devlog this week. And I did record yesterday, but I sounded awful because I was a bit ill. So I cut that and I'm going to show you what we did yesterday. So yesterday I was thinking logging out of Trello and some of the things were mainly designing like new uh, voxel art. I'm not really in the mood for that this week. Just not feeling it. I'm not feeling great. So I decided not to do that. The other thing I added to the list was I saw a video by Tons of Fun Studios or Garrett and he made a custom skybox using a tutorial by Yannick and i thought i've never done that why didn't i add that to the game so doing that while you're real is an awful idea do not make do not even try and mess with shaders on your real if you have no idea how to use shaders but i did it anyway so yesterday i added the universal render pipeline to the project and that allowed me to use the shader graph and after following the tutorial getting some help from garrett and getting some help from yannick actually who i messaged on twitter and he was just a super nice person and he showed me what to do and gave me some extra tips we got a custom skybox. So let me show you how that looks like. So in Unity, if we look up, we've got a custom sky with stars and oh, there it is. <laughs> a sun slash moon. And what's good about this is we have like a lot of control with what we can do with this. So we can choose the color of the sky. It's actually white at the moment. This is the base color for it. So then if I want the sky to be a different color, go pink. There we go, horizon. Let's make that like a dark pink. I'm now looking at level. <laughs> you go on the game view, it just gives it, I mean, the fog's a bit, actually a bit of a horrible color. Um, let's make that like a, When you play the game and then you move around the camera like this, you can see it much more, even though the moon's gone, <laughs> which is just because of the fog. Um, yeah, basically the world comes alive and it looks just a hundred times better. As you can see, we have a lot of control of what we can do here. I'm going to see the graph. Um, here's a shader graph. Um, it's quite large. So I'm going to leave a link to below to Tundra Fun Studio and the tutorial as well, just so you can do it yourself, because like, I need to read over it a lot to make sure I know what I'm talking about. But basically, cloud, cloud mask. Um, here we have fog. Yeah, fog. Here we do a bit of sun color which is a thing that uh, Yannick showed me. You won't find that in the tutorial, but it's not that hard to do. Stars, sky gradient, sun mask. Sun mask, I'll show you what that is. So the sun mask is this cutout. So I reduce this sun mask size, you'll see. So yeah, it's really nice. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Thank you so much to Garrett and Yannick for showing me how to do this. But yeah, that was basically yesterday. Also, if you notice, we've got a webcam now. I fixed the web camera for OBS and it works a lot nicer now. So, what are we doing for the rest of this week? Well, as I said, I don't want to design anything. Not feeling it, not doing it. Can't be bothered doing that. Instead, what we're going to do this week, I'm going to work on getting the second tower to have more functionality because if we play the game, there we go, we've got enough magical essence for a new tower now. Go over here. It's just the same. I mean, I've given it some different stats, but it just shoots one shot and that's it. So I'm going to try and add a damage per second thing on it. So what this tower will do is it will shoot super slow. But it will do damage over time. So it's burning the enemies basically, which I quite like. So look at that sky. Procedural sky, it's beautiful. So this week I'm going to change up, change up a little bit. Instead of rather just showing you what I do each day, because I know what I'm working on this week and it's just going to be that, just because I really don't want to do any design this week. I will show you the results of it when we're done. So yeah, we'll catch back up when I've got, hopefully got the new towers functionality in. Hey everyone, so it's been a few days since I ended the last bit of the video and we had the skybox like we said and this week I wasn't really feeling doing designing because I don't want to, it's not that fun sometimes and I've not been feeling great. So I said this week it's going to be a short devlog but we're going to work on something else as well. 
And that was making the second tower have a different attack type. And as you've just seen from the footage, and I've done it. It's quite a simple procedure, actually. So I'll show you that now. So here we have the code. Rather simple. Bullet controller, we have a few more variables. Damage per second. Basically, the damage per second variables. And these will determine if the bullet will do damage per second. If it does, we go to this damage target over time, which basically does the same as the hit target except for this time instead of doing process hit we do this co-routine right so what we have is a while loop and while the damage per second counter is more than zero we continue to do this so we wait for seconds which is the delay and we do hit points and the enemy takes hit points which is equal to damage per second and then same as before we just reduce the uh, little slider and if the hit points go less than zero well we stop the co-routine and we kill the enemy if they're not dead to that we reduce the counter and it does that however many times the counter sets it which i set in the prefab so what we see here is this is the strong tower so it does no damage it does one damage now because i was going to do no damage but that just means it'll do a little bit of damage over time which isn't that great so it does one damage and then it'll do its damage per second and then if we go into placeholders we have a fireball which is just a bullet but red the fireball it does zero damage amount will do damage per second delay is one so that means every one second it'll do it again the damage per second is 0.5 which is might be a bit low but it's all it works fine and the damage per second counter which is how many times it will do it is three times so in total if we ignore the tower's damage itself it will do 1.5 damage over its lifetime plus the extra damage it does 2.5 damage which is more than the weaker tower which is fine which is what i wanted it to be and as you see on the weaker bullet the damage per second all that stuff is zero if it's zero that means it just doesn't do it and that's fine it works fine hopefully that's a good way to do it <laughs> efficient way to do it so the other thing is i wanted to make it sure it's balanced it's a strong tower but i don't want it to be like oh yeah let's just save up for this one and make it be extremely op so i'm trying to make the fire rate a bit high higher so it doesn't just constantly go for that one so if i make the fire rate like four and the attack range a little bit lower well when we play again now we'll see how it works out there we go, we're on four now. Oh no, that's attacking more. Ah. It does still do damage per second. It's just attacking much quicker than it needs to. But that's how it's going to work. Let's just change that now. So what happened now is it'll attack quite slowly in a small range, but it'll do more damage over time, which is a new attack type. And that's the fire tower, I'm going to call it. Now the devlog's been quite short this week, and there's been a lack of personal razzle-dazzle to the uh, actual video. That's just because the weather has been a bit atrocious if I turn this around. As you can see, as you can see, the weather's a bit atrocious. Not wanting to go out, there's been a few thunderstorms recently. So that's probably when I'm gonna end it this week. If we go back on Trello, I always say that. So I've got quite a few things to do for this milestone, but that's fine, I don't wanna have to do a milestone like every week because even though we'll make a lot of progress, it kind of burns out the game for me. Like, we did these all in the same week. I mean, that was good. I got a lot of stuff done, and it was great to see the game get built so quickly. But it just didn't feel that good. Like, I got really tired very quickly. Thank you all for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I did a mistake then, and I forgot to um, actually tell you about it. Right. So, what I've done now is I've had to change it around. So the towers that do damage over time, they actually do call process hit now because they weren't doing the initial damage as well. And I've reduced its attack damage to 0.5. So it'll do the hit of 0.5 and then it'll do damage over time. I've also made it so it can't stack damage over time. Maybe it will in the future, but at the moment it can't. So you can't be like doing every second it's taking off one damage, it's still 0.5 second. And I do that with a bull. If that, if that enemy is taking damage over time, is false it will call the code routine if it's true it will just ignore it and you set that in the code routine itself so that's how it works just wanted to quickly throw that in because i'll forget by the next time i need to record and you'll never know that i fixed that so yeah thank you everyone again and i'll see you again soon i wasn't going to record this i did a mistake bye